morning. It's half past nine. It's time to start our live lesson. Miss O'Donnell, please can you let me know if you can hear us okay? I know that you needed a bit of extra help with your sound settings. I hope you can hear us now. Hopefully. So let's get started. Miss O'Donnell, if you're still having problems, you can put it in the chat. One of my colleagues will be able to help you. Okay. So let's get started. Today's lesson and story is all about plastic pollution, which is not a nice thing. And how we can make changes and help our planet to start looking like this, you, and start looking again like this. Isn't this a beautiful photo? I like this one much better. I can really imagine the smells of fresh air and the sounds of birds in the forest back there. Can you? Is there a place in Scotland that looks kind of like this that you like? I bet there is. What would we like you to do this week? Well, first of all, litter picking. Let's clean our environment and help our animals by taking all of the litter we can see away. It's one of the easiest things we can do to protect our environment is to put all of the litter that we see in the right place. And then we have a really fun game for you to play outside too all about helping to save sea turtles from plastic waste. And teachers, if, when you're, if you're listening, the game instructions are in the resource folder for when you've got time to go outside to play. <coughs> Excuse me. And now it's story time. Today, we are extremely lucky to be joined by Sarah Roberts, who not only writes amazing books, but who also works all around the world helping to protect wildlife and create an awareness of what is happening to nature. In fact, she is joining us today all the way from Namibia, where she is filming and working to protect rhinoceroses. Which is <laughs> a big Hi, thank you to Sarah for joining us today and to our friends from the Scottish Book Trust for making this workshop happen. Now, Sarah, just before you get started, I wanted to let everyone know just where you're joining us from today. So the big purple dot at the top is where most of us are joining from today in Scotland. And the big yellow star all the way at the bottom of the screen is where Sarah is joining us from today. So Sarah, we really appreciate that you are taking the time to join us from so far away when you're busy doing your work. I hope you can see the slides. I will get your story up right now. Like Thank you very much for having me. Hello, Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice to see you all this morning. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, so this morning we're going to be doing a special workshop, which is all about my first book, which is called Somebody Swallowed Stanley. So some of you may well have um, seen this book before, um, but if you've not, this is somewhat of a guessing game. So you're going to get lots of different clues about different creatures that live in the ocean. And as we go through, I'm going to ask you if you know what those creatures are. You can shout out in your classrooms nice and loud. OK, so let's begin. You can see the slides OK? Yeah, I can see them fine. Amazing. Thank you. Stanley Sweat into the sea with a splash and a splish. Perhaps he's one of us, thought the other jellyfish. But his stripes were too straight and his tentacles too few. He just floated in the sea, not sure what to do. You see, Stanley was no ordinary jellyfish. Then <gasps> something terrible happened. Somebody swallowed Stanley, but who could it be? Her tongue was rough as barnacles, her mouth as vast as a cave. As she hummed her low song, Stanley tried to be brave. Who could this be, kids? Does anyone know what this creature is? So who had swallowed Stanley? If you know what this big blue creature is, you can shout out on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Give yourselves a big pat on the back if you thought it was something beginning with a W. If not, keep guessing. 
her tongue, uh, the creature stopped singing as Stanley slid down her long, slimy throat. She coughed <coughs> and she spluttered. And then, whoosh, with a rush and a rumble, steam burst from her spout. A whale had swallowed Stanley, but now he was out. So a big pat on the back if you thought it was a whale, you were right. Now on the top of the whale's head, if you can see my mouse moving, on the top of the whale's head, there's a hole where Stanley popped out of. Now that is called a blowhole. And although these fish, although they live in the sea and whales live in the sea too, Whales are not like fish at all. In fact, they're actually mammals just like us, which means they can't breathe underwater. So what they do is they hold their breath and they swim down. And when they come up to the surface, the first thing they want to do is go, ah, and that's what they do at the hole in the top of their head, which is their nose. A whale had swallowed Stanley, but now he was out. Stanley dropped with a splash back into the sea, where he bobbed along gently, calm and carefree, until, uh-oh, something terrible happened. Somebody swallowed Stanley, but who could it be? So if you look very closely, I wonder if you can guess what this creature is. Hmm, if you think you know, put your hands up so your teachers can see who thinks they've got a good idea. Let's see, but who could it be? with a sharp yellow beak and a small beady eye the creature flapped his wings and rose up to the sky but who had swallowed stanley if you know what this creature is shout out on the count of three ready one two three gosh i could almost hear you all the way from africa it's a seagull well done he pecked and then snapped and he nipped, but Stanley wouldn't go down. More creatures flew over, first two and then three. In all the flapping and squawking, they let Stanley be. A seagull had swallowed Stanley, but now he was free. Give yourselves a big pat on the back if you got that right. Now, if you look very closely at the seagulls on these pages, you can see they've got big yellow beaks but they've also got that reddy orange patch on their beak. Now I'm gonna let you into a secret because it's not an accident that they have that patch at all. In fact, it is an eject button. So when a baby seagull chick hatches from its egg in its nest, it's covered in these gray fuzzy wuzzy feathers and it can't fly off on its own to get food, can it? So instead it waits and it waits and it waits until their mum or dad comes back to the nest and then do you know what they do? The chick pecks that red eject button on their mum and dad's beak and they go and all of their fish and all of their food that they've been eating they vomit it all up and then the chick, do you know what the chick does? It goes yum 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 yum, thank you very much. So how many of you would like to have your school dinners like that today, hey? Shall we get the teachers and the dinner ladies to chew it all up for you first? In all the flapping and squawking, they let Stanley be. A seagull had swallowed Stanley, but now he was free. Poor old Stanley was ripped up, scruffy and torn. He sank and he sank and he sank down some more. But something terrible happened before he reached the sea floor. <sighs> Somebody swallowed Stanley again. But who could it be? Her paddle shaped flippers skimmed the seabed. She had a beautiful shell and a small wrinkly head. So who had swallowed Stanley? Does anybody know what this creature is in the top corner? Hmm, let's see if you're right. She gasped and she spluttered and then started to choke too. But Stanley was stuck without much he could do. A turtle had swallowed Stanley. The creature was scared and swam quickly to shore. With Stanley stuck in her throat, she couldn't breathe anymore. Oh dear. So give yourselves a big pat on the back if you thought turtle. 
Now, there's another reason that this turtle had Stanley very, very much stuck, and that is because the sea turtle, one of their favourite foods is a jellyfish. But if you've ever touched a jellyfish, you would know that jellyfish are very, very wobbly and very, very slippery and very, very slimy. And turtles, since they don't have hands and they don't have teeth, they would have a very difficult time keeping that slippery, slimy creature in their mouth. So what they've done over a very long period of time is they have grown spikes inside of their throat all of the way down to their tummy. And those spikes hook onto the jellyfish so that it can't fall out its mouth. But this sea turtle has eaten Stanley. Has anybody noticed anything a little bit strange about Stanley? Put your hands up in your classrooms if you've noticed something a little bit strange about Stanley. OK, let's see. A turtle had swallowed Stanley. The creature was scared and swam quickly to shore with Stanley stuck in her throat. <gasps> she couldn't breathe anymore. The turtle closed her eyes and lay down on the sand. But then Stanley heard footsteps. Help was at hand. A kind boy on the beach came and took Stanley free. But then Stanley heard, Plastic bags don't belong in the ocean blue. Creatures think you're a jellyfish and they swallow you. Now with a rope and a branch, he made something new. <gasps> a kite! Flying high in the air, Stanley soared to and fro safe from the sea and all creatures below. Okay, guys, so now you can see that Stanley wasn't a jellyfish after all, was he? Stanley was actually, what was he on the count of three? One, two, three. Yes, Stanley was a plastic bag. And now, of course, he is a kite. So he has been upcycled into something new. Now we're going to have a little look at the creatures in the book. So if we go on to our next part of the presentation, a bit further, we should be able to see. Now, what is this? I wonder, can anybody at all guess what on earth this is here? Shout out as loud as you can if you know. It's not a shark, no, it's actually a sea turtle's mouth. So all of these spikes, just like I said, cover the whole of the sea turtle's mouth all the way down to their stomach. And it's actually very clever. It's called an adaptation because for sea turtles, that means that they get to eat more and more food, except for a sea turtle that eats a plastic bag. Can you imagine how difficult it would be for that sea turtle to spit it back out again? Yes, it would be very difficult, wouldn't it? And on our next slide, we should have, yes, does anyone know what this creature is? On the count of three, shout out as loud as you can. One, two, three. Whale, well done. Now this is a humpback whale. And on this picture, you can see that the whale's mouth is far forward, but its eye is almost right down here by its fin. So when the whale opens its mouth, Although it can gobble up lots and lots and lots of fish all at the same time, it can't really see very well what is in amongst the fish. So quite often by mistake, the whales, when they go to feed and they open that big mouth of theirs, they can swallow fishing nets and plastic or anything that's floating around the surface amongst the fish and not know about it, which can give the whales a very, very poorly stomach. So we don't want that to happen, do we? And what's on the next slide? Let's have a little look. What creature is this? Shout out on the count of three if you know what this creature is. One, two, three. A seagull, absolutely. So this is actually a herring gull. So if we look here, you can see that red patch on their beak. 
just like I said, it comes in very, very useful when a little chick hatches from its nest. That's the first thing they know as soon as they hatch from their egg. It's called innate behavior. So they are born knowing that this red patch is in fact an eject button. So it's very, very important. And sometimes what can happen is these adult seabirds go and hunt for food or sometimes they scavenge. You might have seen them near the bins quite often in seaside towns. They can end up eating things they're not supposed to. And when they vomit that up, they can feed that to their chick as well. So all of these reasons are why it's very, very, very important that when we finish with our litter, where shall we put it? On the count of three, where do we put our litter when we finish with it? One, two, three. In the bin, absolutely. And even better for some litter, for some parts of plastic, you can put it in a recycling bin too. So it gets used and made into something new. Now, we also have a video to show you guys. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to ask whether or not we can play it through here, whether we're sharing the link. But we can show you also how lots of different creatures are affected by plastic. Uh -huh. I can share it for you. Amazing. Here we go. Now, I hope I've shared the sound. Let's give it a go. My name is Sarah Roberts and I am the author of Somebody Swallowed Stanley. I wrote Somebody Swallowed Stanley because I'm actually an animal behaviorist and I work a lot with wild animals in the field. But no matter how far that I've traveled, I've seen that plastic has actually been a problem for all the animals that I've ever worked with. In my book, you saw that Stanley got chewed up and swallowed by lots of different sea creatures and in the end, he got chewed up by a turtle. I'm here at Loggerhead Marine Life Centre where they rescue lots of turtles every year that are all affected by lots of different issues. But one of the things that they have seen very commonly is turtles that are affected by plastic. In my hand here, you have some tiny, tiny pieces of plastic. Now, all of these were found inside of a baby sea turtle's stomach. So this was a sea turtle that just hatched. It went off to sea and then it got confused about what it could and couldn't eat and it ate plastic. Now, if you imagine this baby sea turtle would be the size of my hand and this would be the whole size of its stomach. It's not just turtles that are affected by plastic pollution though. Sharks are also affected, as are many, many different creatures. And this is because of something called the food chain. Now at the bottom of the food chain, there are plants and the turtles that eat the plants can also eat the plastic bottles and other parts of plastic. A shark comes along and eats the turtle, it can eat the plastic in the turtle's belly as well. And that works its way up the food chain. Some sharks also swim around with their mouths wide open and they eat krill and plankton which floats at the sea surface. That means that while they're swimming around with their mouth open, they can swallow any plastic that floats, like Stanley. Plastic is also bad for seabirds, whales, dolphins, every creature that swallows it. To stop this from happening, when you go to the beach, the best thing you can do is ask your mum and dad or a responsible adult to help you pick up any bits of plastic that you can find and then you can put them in the bin Make sure that you never drop litter and make sure you always recycle it wherever possible. And also the last thing you can do is try to reduce the amount of plastic that you use. If you enjoyed my book and you want to find out more about different wildlife creatures, head over to my YouTube channel, Sarah's Real Job, and you'll be able to find videos with all the animals that I've ever worked with. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that you've all really enjoyed this workshop. Um, I think that you've got some fantastic tasks that are going to get introduced to you very, very shortly. I'm just going to wait to see.
Yeah. Thank you. Sarah, thank you so much for that. That was amazing. Um, I enjoyed your story so much. And I no. love the video that you shared as well with the little baby sea turtles. That was amazing too. Um, I'm just so impressed that you've managed to join us with all the conservation work that you're doing and your busy schedule. Um, so just thank you so much. Thank you, you so much for having us. It's been an absolute pleasure. And, and thank you to all the schools that are working so hard to teach about this topic and all the kids that are doing their, their absolute best to keep Britain tidy and to keep Scotland beautiful. So thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to, to um, speak to some more eco schools as well. Uh, well. I hope you can join us again sometime soon so we can hear more about your work. And I hope you catch your flight on time. <laughs> I know, that's, that's my main, yeah, I'm sorry I have to rush off. Quite that's so okay. Quickly. But yes, it's been a pleasure to meet you guys. Thank you, Sarah. And next time in Scotland, I'll see you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Right, well, Sarah is right. We do have those two really fun activities for you to do when you've got time. And also we wanted to say um, that when you do do the game, um, or the other activities that we have for you. If you would take pictures or share your work with us, you can send it to us on social media or you can email us at ecoschools at keepscotlandbeautiful.org. And if it's okay for us to share your pictures and stories with all the other schools that are joining us on Friday for the assembly, and I hope you can too, then please let me know in the email. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. I really hope you enjoy playing the jellyfish game. Um, I, I can't wait to see the pictures of you doing it. Um, I hope you can join us again for another live lesson soon. Thank you very much. Bye.